welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, and I'm in a good mood today. I I went to the range and had a good time out there and shot up a couple of hundred rounds of my newly acquired ammo and uh, got my scope corrected from, <laughs> from all the banging around I did on things the other day. And whoever was asking me about the plastic buffer I put in my 1022, I was experiencing some jams and so I took it out and put the metal one back in while I was at the range and that didn't fix the jams but what fixed the jams was pushing the, the little bullets all the way back into the, into the magazine. But I left it with the, uh, with the metal buffer so I can't tell you if replacing it with plastic is good or bad. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to try and straighten up all the plastic injection here and see if we can't get things where we can sort of production line make knobs or whatever. And uh, I think I know exactly what I would do if I were to start all over again. I know I could come up with an even, even better plastic injector because, uh, you know, you get a little experience with the doing. But we're going we're gonna to fix this thing to work as good as I think as we possibly can. So without saying anything more, let's just get on with the video. I was looking at the plastic injector the other day and realized that I had put the handle on it wrong. The, the little hingey parts were in the wrong spot and probably that back piece was too tall. So I'm going to take it down and put more adjustment holes in the back of it so I can bolt it on lower and higher and whatever and get the exact right leverage out of the, uh, out of the handle. In the redoing of that handle there I made a a little yoke <clears throat> to go on the threaded part. I'll drill this and thread it to the half inch 13 that that rod is. Then I'll drill a hole through here for the little pin to hold it against the handle. And I may have to move the hole on that handle to a different spot. I'm not really certain about that. But once I get that done, I'll make a couple little clamps to hold my mold together and we'll melt some plastic. At least that's my plan. So hang in there. Okay, so a coupler is made for the, uh, for the shaft for the plastic injection. And uh, next I got to make a little pin to go through it. I've got some quarter inch material here that'll fit just right. Just got to cut it off and drill a hole in the end of it. Okay, I looked over the idea with the lever and all that, and I didn't like it, so I decided to go high tech. We're going to we're going to push the plastic in with this uh, hydro uh, this air cylinder. It's not a hydraulic, it's air. And we're going to use him to shove the plastic. In. There you are. All I got to do is bolt it down, you know, above the cylinder, and then plumb the thing right to get the air into the right ends at the right time. So we'll just keep on in this in this direction. Alright, so going to uh, the air cylinder means I had to put a new bracket. It runs right up the side of it there. I have to have about a quarter of an inch standoff from the from the bracket to make it line up all the way top to bottom. But there you have it. That's the new setup. Of course, it'll have to be cleaned and painted and then assembled, and then I'll have to work out how to handle the air. You know, I guess I'll have to get a nice valve to go on the inlet. This is, as far as I know, a one way cylinder. It'd be nice if I had a spring to push it back up, but that's wishing for a lot, you know. I don't know I'm going to find a a nice strong 10 inch spring. We'll see. Well, I had to make a longer support so I could hold that cylinder. But I cut off, also I cut off some of the uh, tubing. That's the part there with the slot in it. And you can see there's a lot of difference in length between the supports now. So, next step would be to it together and like I say figure out how to 
run the air through it. Okay, so I shortened the, uh, the tube where the plastic's melting, cut this much off of it. This was what was left over from the last time. And I'll probably just dump that right back in there and melt it again. And I replaced this with a longer support because we're going to go to, uh, you know, the air cylinder instead of a, a lever. I think the air cylinder is much better. It's just a straight down force. And it'll always come all about this short of the bottom. But, you know, it doesn't matter if there's a pile of plastic left over in there. You just melt it and go on with it for the next thing. So, let me... Uh, get things a little bit more organized and we'll try to hook up air. Okay, I don't know whether I'm going to put a spring on there, you know, on there. I got one just in case. Or just to alternate the air hose from top the nozzle to bottom nozzle. But I got it piped up here at great expense, I might add. I'm starting to think that uh, I really favor the idea of the, uh, of the spring, considering how much fun this is taking on and off. Alright, so you can see this guy here, and this thing came with a, uh, a little regulator here, to, a little nozzle to regulate how fast the, the cylinder moves. I'm going to try to regulate it with this little valve here by just cracking it open a tiny bit and we'll see what happens. So, I don't have much right, so we'll start off with just giving it a little bit down. Okay, so, I guess that was open more than I expected. And that one open. Now this is kind of a the paint needs to be piped up a little bit better, but uh, I don't believe this tube was really intended, this hydro, this uh, pneumatic cylinder, I don't think it was intended to be closed like that with air, but it works. So I need to, I guess, spend a little time thinking as to whether I want to, you know, want to run the thing on the air. And, I'll have to do some piping up. You'd be amazed at how much three-way valves and such cost is why I'm doing it in this uh, low-tech manner. Heck, the fittings I got there, that was almost $30 worth of fittings. So, and the valves came from uh, Harbor Freight. It's even with half the stuff. Which reminds me of Chucky 2009 here the other day was showing all the good tools he got from Harbor Freight. Showing that they weren't all bad, you know, like he showed his floor jacks and uh, various and sundry other things. And uh, well, that's already down. <laughs> Must have went down while I was talking. Anyway, he showed all his uh, floor jacks and such things. And uh, yeah, that goes up in a nice controlled manner, so I did that just barely cracked open a little. Anyway, he caught a lot of flack from from my uh, commenters about uh, his Harbor Freight tools. I thought it was kind of unusual because he dragged out a lot of them, but then again, I got Harbor Freight tools that are good tools too. My saw is a good tool. Uh, the, you know, the wet or dry vacuum I got from them is a good tool. My MIG welder is a good tool. It's not up to, to Chucky 2009 standards, but it, it's perfect for a guy like me that just does a little bit of welding. And uh, so not everything from Harbor Freight is bad, even though a common statement is that I got it from Harbor Freight and it's broke. <laughs> but anyway, so you can, you've got the idea on the up and down with the cylinder. And I'm going to think about whether I'm going to go to the trouble of putting the, uh, the spring on or not. Alright, I tried the spring and it's just too strong. I can't even squeeze it down far enough to get it on there. So, I suppose we'll just go with the air valves and they swap the hose around. 
Everything is still experimental right now anyway, so who knows what I'll come up with that works really the best. Now I need to make uh, some clamps for the for the mold and we'll melt some plastic after a while. Alright, pretty much off camera I have uh, made some little clamps to clamp my mold shut. And uh, I'm going to screw this one still. Push a few chips off the bottom. Anyway, what we're going to do, now that I've got these uh, clamps made, I should be able to chuck the thing full of uh, plastic and try to make a, uh, a little part this time that doesn't need any anything special other than just to take it off there and pop it out of the mold. Now I'm going to have to deburr the insides of these. A couple other little boring things, so I'll be with you shortly. Before I even get started with anything, I point out I changed the little bolts that go in there from hex head to, to flat because that was getting in the way of of plastic going down into the bottom piece there. And we don't really need that, so I changed that. You can see if you can see down in there that uh that gives a lot more room for the plastic to get through. I believe that that'll be an improvement. Now clamping this thing together may not be as easy to do. My clamps are a little bit thick, so I'm going to have to work on them a couple of minutes. Okay, the new and improved clamps have now been screwed on. Cut the ends of them at kind of an angle so they'd fit up under everything. And they're look to me like they'll hold nice and tight so the next step is to round up some plastic heat this little bugger up and let's see what happens important matters have been addressed and progress is being made I can tell you that uh, we're up to 358 degrees right now with the temperature set for 400 I've got quite a lot of plastic down in that tube and it seems like it's controllable even with my Mickey Mouse valve set up to uh, raise it and lower it so it's altogether possible that we may make some plastic here at just almost any time you can never tell about these things but uh, when I think the temperature is up about right I'll come back and zoom you in on the mold and when you're zoomed in on the mold you should be able to see anything worth seeing so I'll be around here and return with you shortly we've hit 400 degrees and I have no reason to believe that anything really big is in our way so zoom you in on the on the mold and we'll give her a squirt of air at the top and see what happens, if anything. Trying to have some little something happen. Alright, that's 150 pounds, or 125 pounds. see anything coming out anywhere. I know the cylinder there is full of plastic because I've been stuffing in big huge chunks and there's how far the piston's gone down. That's the little support piece behind the piston that you're looking at. The rest of the piston has settled on down into the, the tube there on top of that hot plastic and I may stroke it back up one time just to observe it. Alright. 
came back up. The plastic bottle in there is about right there. So, I don't know if you can see where I pointed my finger, but the plastic level is just between the, the brace there and the, the heating element. And I've got another little chunk that I can feed in. See the guy right here. It's a lot easier cutting it off with a with a hacksaw in your vise than, than the first time around. This is still totally experimental, you know. Totally experimental. Okay, so the little uh, temperature controller shows 380 degrees coming back up. The last slug of plastic I put in there seems to have cooled it down some, but it's on its way back. So I figure if it's my thermocouple is at the middle uh, heat band and everything's exiting down at the bottom heat band so I figure if it's that temperature at that heat band then the rest of everything's got to be somewhere in the same range and so far nothing is squirted out around the mold or anything and I'm going to give it uh, I guess one more one more nice squeeze and then lift the cylinder and put on some gloves and unscrew the mold I had a little preliminary touch of it. It's hotter than a pistol. Well, there's a little preliminary squeeze on it. get a pair of gloves see what happens I would imagine that a <laughs> an oven mitten would be a lot better but you got to go with what you got there's plastic in the mold look at that plastic all right so We'll turn our things around here and open this thing up and find out what comes out. Turn the camera around. Handheld for a moment. Gotta get an Allen key. Take these guys off and see how it works, if it were to work at all. It's hot. Ouch. Ah, it, yeah. It's still kind of hot, but I'm sure it'll come, come apart here in a second. There we go. We've been a sissy, and it looks like we've got something. A piece there may have to be shaved off. Probably better to shave it off while it's hot. Let me see if I've got anything to cut with. Alright, I got my little razor blade that I use to change inspection stickers every year. Let's, uh, let's see if he'll cut this thing off. It's possible. Sounds like somebody's outside with a water hose. Cut just real easy. Right my pocket knife. It's not much bigger. Mm. 
I'm almost certain someone's outside washing the garage door with a water hose. All right, there went that little piece off of it. Let's see if I can put on the glove and push it apart. There we go. Now then, this of course one screw that ain't covering at all. He said so. It's uh. I'll be back with a little pair of pliers or something. could have had but we're going to get another bolt and we're going to do another turn at it and I'll be back all right this is the second one I've plunged the piston down in there about three times I didn't put any new plastic in because there's plenty of plastic between the bottom of the piston and the bottom of the uh, injection thing there at the mold now there was a little blob hanging out when I screwed it back on and that little blob may have been soft, it may have been hard, I don't know. So, I guess what I'm going to do here is to go back and give it, uh, well, I'm going to lift the, the ram up on the thing and unscrew it and see if we got another part. So, we're going to get right back in the camera, I hope. And we'll see if we got anything in here. Like I say, there was a little piece sticking out, and no, uh, it got cold on me before before anything good happened. So I'm gonna have to start that one over again. Oh well, a few little failures would be expected. There's nothing coming out the bottom of it now, so. Screw this thing on there and get it good and tight. Let the temperature hit 400 good. And I'm going to let the mold warm up on the bottom of it for a second just in case. Because I don't know how cold the, the plastic down in there might be. And it might be that I might need to just, every time before I mold any of it, is to just punch a little bit out of it there and recycle it back up into the top just to be sure I got hot stuff in the bottom. But you'd think it'd be pretty hot in the bottom by now. Well, I'm going to cut back on the camera and return shortly. This guy had the little, the little button on the top where there was, you know, plastic coming down from the mold and I thought, how am I going to get it off? I wonder if I just touched it to the bench grinder and it's just smooth as silk there. So, and now I know how to clean them up once they come out. I know it's just probably boring the same shape over and over again. At least I'm doing different thread sizes. Uh, the next thing I'll have to do is figure out other objects to, to mold. According to my Harbor Freight temperature gun, the, the hottest place is that middle uh, clamp there. So I may need to move my thermocouple down to the bottom and let it regulate the temperature on the bottom instead of the middle because the bottom is where I need the, the very most heat. It claims 413 in the middle. Make sure it's on Fahrenheit. All right, that's 402 down here, 152, 
So in the top of that bottom temperature band at the bottom of it, it gets below the, the melting point of plastic really quick. So no doubt I need to move my temperature sensor so that things stay hotter longer. That'll be the, the next in, uh, revision. All right, time to unscrew it and give it another try. See if I, see if I got anything this time. I guess it's back to the old glove band at Harbor Freight. All right, here we go. I think the plastic is threaded. There. That's out. And that looks like another well-formed uh, mold there, so <coughs> see if I can get it to come out. Oh, it's a little hard to get started. There we go. It's going to be perfectly straight. I may have got the tolerance too tight on that little bottom piece. All right, see if we can unscrew this fella. Mm, this thing smells like soap. Undoubtedly, I didn't get it really clean when it was a soap bottle. There we go. All right, we'll unscrew this little booger here. that I can turn these out one right after the other. I'm pretty satisfied if I come up with another shape, I can turn it out too. Same compression. Okay, I've turned out those four knobs in about 20 minutes. These three are pretty well perfect in every way. This one right here, I didn't screw the, the little bolt down far enough but I still think it's probably a good knob because that, that bolt's not likely to come loose anytime soon. But I'll know to be a little faster or screw down a little deeper next time. Mistakes happen. But there you are. More than double. 20 minutes and most of the time I spent goofing off with too many presses of the ram. I've learned now that when I screw the, the little top piece of the mold on, I'll wipe his chin to get the plastic off that's dripping down, you know, the little girl, and then clamp the thing together and it'll all warm up and work out just fine. And of course the drool I'll wipe off, I can stick right back in the, in the hopper. I couldn't help playing with the machine, so now the price per knob is down, who knows, maybe to the 15 or $20 a piece range. I'm getting close to the hardware store price. A couple dozen more and I'll be down there. Uh, which reminds me of Bubba. Bubba went off down to the grocery store one afternoon last week and uh, he was a long time coming back. He was real late when he got back. Bobby Sue says, Bubba, what took you so darn long going to the grocery store? Bubba says, well, he said there was a fellow down there that lost a hundred dollar bill. and and." Bobby Sue says, oh, she says, so you've been a nice guy and helping him find it, huh? Bubba says, well, nope, not exactly. He says, I was standing on it. I had a way to give up looking. Well, that's Bubba for you. Remember, hit the subscribe knob to make an old geezer happy. And leave a comment. And y'all just keep on keeping on. Bye now.